is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. That is Manny Navarro. How you doing, my friend? You hanging in there? Hanging in there, man. Uh, interesting first day down there in uh, Coral Gables for uh, spring ball. Obviously a tough yeah. day emotionally for uh, for Mario Cristobal, but, uh, you know, interesting first day. Yeah, no, and, and you know, some people were telling me, like, well, that's weird that he's, you know, uh, everybody deals with grief differently. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know he came out there and said, no, this is what my mom would have wanted. And, and, and of course she would have wanted that. You know why? Cause she knows that that makes her son happy. And, and, and the moms always want their kids to be happy doing what, whatever they want to do. You know what I mean? And at the same time, you know, I, uh, I think all, some of us, not all, but some of us can relate to what Mario did yesterday because there's a lot of us that kind of, we need things sometimes to get our minds off of that. You know what I mean? Some mm -hmm. of us, and I think Mario's kind of like me in that sense, that he probably doesn't like sitting in a corner somewhere, you know, pouting about something or or, or crying over something or, you know what I mean? It's it's more like, okay, I got I to gotta compartmentalize this and I will, and I'm dealing with the grief, but I got to have something that keeps my mind off of it. And I think that was therapy for him yesterday is what I saw. I saw a man that needed some therapy and football is his therapy. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, and it's hard oh, when it takes the, the level of dedication that this guy puts into doing his job. Um, it, it, it's tough to compartmentalize, right? I mean, you lose your mom. He knew his mom was sick for several years, right? Yep. I mean, she, she'd been in the hospital for a while now. Um, and, you know, coming back home, he knew this was inevitable. Um, that said, you know, he is so focused and dedicated to this job that for him to stop and deal with that kind of grief, the grief that he probably wants to let go. Right. You want you want to be able to feel all of those things and shed those tears and, and you know, kind of go through the emotions. It, it's like it's almost like he has to protect himself from from fully diving into that because he knows if he does, it's going to be hard to 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 maintain the focus that he needs to do his job. And, and he is so dedicated to that job right now. I told you last week he looked exhausted to me when I saw him in person in Lakeland, um, you know, yesterday he looked like a guy really, really trying to fight, fight it. You know, when he was, when he was there talking to us, like he just didn't want, he didn't want to think about it until he was at the funeral and um, you know, God bless him. Uh, it, it takes a strong person to be able to, to do what he's doing, you know, and go through what he's gone through uh, the sacrifice. People don't realize the sacrifices these guys make, man, like just, uh, no, the amount of hours they put into to to this job, it, it really is crazy. It, it's crazy in sports how how these guys live and sleep uh, at their offices uh, and, and just dedicate themselves completely and put other things in their life to the side for this. And uh, you know, the Hurricanes are lucky to have a coach like Mario Cristobal for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's no doubt. It's uh, just looks like a perfect marriage um, with Mario and uh, and Miami. And you're standing there and you're watching this, uh, all these coaches on the sidelines. Uh, this might be the more star studded uh, line uh, coaching staff that you've covered, right? Absolutely. I mean, you, you just look at the, you know, Charlie Strong out there with a turtleneck and these khaki shorts. His tradition, what he, what he wears in places where it's a little colder than here, right? Uh, right. He's, he's wearing <laughs> uh, in, in this heat and he's out there sweating bullets and you can see him. Uh, you know, the heat was rough yesterday on a lot of those guys. Joe Salavea, uh, you know, he, he's dealt with some heat in the past, but you could tell he was melting out there <laughs> yesterday. Uh, the defensive line coach, he's completely got the hood covering him up. He's trying to just shield himself from that sun, man. Uh, but, yeah, it was incredible. Jason Taylor out there wearing the suit, taking pictures with some of the players' moms as he was leaving the field. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is how, – how many, how many moms were asking for his number? <laughs> hey, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, it, 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 You know – Jason, uh, he, he's such a nice guy, man. He doesn't, he'll stop by and say hi to everyone, you know, when he's, when he's kind of on his way out the door. And, uh, so I was out there with Corey Flagg's mom, uh, and she's, you know, kind of visiting from Houston or whatever. She came out to see her son go through some of the spring practices and, uh, she didn't even wreck, she didn't even know 
who it was. Like I had to explain to her who Jason Taylor was. She's like, oh, that's him. And I'm like, yes, that's him. And she's, you know, she's you, very you happy. You didn't mention Dancing with the Stars because that's really all you got to <laughs> mention because that's probably how they'll know him more than anything else. Right, right, right. But, Didn't he uh, win it, by the way? I, he think, came I, I, can't, I think he was one of the finalists. Yeah, I'm not sure that he yeah. won it. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, but, I mean, listen, even Roland Smith, you know, who ex-Hurricane, who, who legendary high school coach down here, man. I mean, six, seven state championships this guy's won in his time as a, as a high school football coach. He's there. And, and it, it's just there's a lot more people who want to be involved with this because Mario's here. And I had a conversation with somebody recently in, in UM's administration about that, about, you know, it's not just about the money that, that Mario has to spend. It's the fact that people look at him and they want to be attached to him. Right. And this situation. Yeah. He's a credible person, man. It's mm -hmm. a thing. You know, he's a guy that, that he looks at you in the eye and, and, and he tells you what he's going to do. And then he's going to do what he tells you he's going to do. And you can count on it. And so it's, you know, as a, as a, as a fellow coach, you want to, you want to work with a guy that, you know, you can depend on, you know what I mean? And that, I, I think that's why a Charlie strong who could go get a, a bigger job if he felt like it, but he won't have the same stability. It won't be the same thing. So he comes here because now he sees that Mario's here and then that the school's backing him up and he says, okay, I've got a job here for a long time to come if I feel like it. You know what I mean? And so I think a lot of these guys kind of feel that like, OK, this is the kind of place I can I can attach my name to and it's going to grow from here. It'll give me a platform to go to bigger and better things or I will accomplish bigger, better things in here. So either way, you can't lose if you attach yourself to this environment right now led by Mario. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you look at a guy like Jason Taylor, who, you know, he's got young kids uh he's got kids that are in college football now um you know and he loves coaching so this is sort of a perfect you know it's kind of like ed reed was last year where he was in that chief of staff role where you know he can he can observe and help in the ways that he wants and so it's beneficial for a guy like him or a guy like charlie strong and kevin Steele, who are in their 60s who have been in, in college football for over 30 years um you know it's a place where like you said they knowing mario's got a contract for 10 years they know they got a job as long as they do a good job here for the next few years, that they can kind of settle in and, and maybe leave a, a lasting legacy, right? A, a place where you win a – to be that coach who's a part of a staff that wins a national championship for Miami again, like that is some that is a feather in a cap. That is a, a career-defining type thing to be attached to something like that. So I think, you know, whether or not those guys move on in the next couple of years to other things or retire or whatever, um, I, I, I think you're going to have – guys willing to come in and replace them easily. Like I think Mario and he, and I asked him yesterday, I said, are you done adding guys? And he said, no. So I think there, there could be more people essentially who, who, who want to come be a part of this. By the way, um, tell us a little bit about Marwan Malouf, 15 year coach in the NFL on special teams. Holy crap, dude. Yeah. Saw, uh, one experience. Yeah, a lot of experience. One of a couple of special teams guys that they're essentially bringing in here in, in analyst type roles. Um, you know, he's a guy who was with the Dolphins, I think, as an assistant special teams coach for a little while, right? Wasn't he related to, with, with the Dolphins? Uh, most I think recently, so, yes. Most recently with the Vikings, I know, for a little while. Vikings fans weren't happy with him because there were some special <laughs> I saw that. I read those little tweets. I, I did a Twitter search and uh, for, for the name to see what, what are people saying about this guy. I know some, some Viking fans were upset with him, but you, you're right. 15 years of experience and ultimately a guy who, um, again, Mario can go to kickers and punters and special teamers and say, look, you're working with an NFL caliber coach, right? That's the guy who would be overseeing you. Um, that's what all of this is about. It's about building the best staff so that you can go out and recruit the best players and sell those type of things to players. By the way, Jay uh, on the uh, chat board wants to give you a little love. He says, great article on The Athletic by Manny last night brought uh, tears to my eyes, made me laugh, and informed me on so much. So a little love on your, uh, on your I appreciate uh, that. article yesterday. I appreciate that, Jay. I, I was getting some hate yesterday on Twitter because I, I tweeted out that I had asked Jay Garcia, what are you still doing here? Uh, and, and I meant it in, it was kind of a shortened version of my question in the press conference, but I was getting hell from fans. They're like, what are you doing asking him that? He's going to leave now. You know, you're, you're sort of, it's the, it's the wrong question to ask this guy. 
And, uh, you know, I, 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 again, it was a shortened version, but essentially what I wanted to know from Jake Garcia was you saw Tyler Van Dyke dominate, right? The second half of last season, he's going to be the starter in all likelihood. Hmm. You love Miami. Why don't you tell us why you're still here? Like explain, you know, why tell the fans essentially that. So he did. And he, and, and I got a text from his father, by the way, for the fans who are wondering, I got a text from his dad who said, listen, uh, the short question that you put on Twitter, not good. The, the question you asked in real life, very good. And we appreciate you asking it. So there's no uh, animosity between Jake Garcia and me. Friends, he understands he's a big boy. Fans get silly. Like, you don't think that conversation <laughs> was had by Jake and his dad right. and his right. parents? Come on, dude. What do you think? They're, they're all sitting there going, well, okay, the other kid kicked ass. There's probably a chance I don't start. Should I stay here or not? You think that wasn't discussed? And, and guess what, fans, that you're so ultra-sensitive? You better be grateful that Manny asked it because – now you know what the kid is thinking right? because you did not know and you want to fool yourself thinking, oh, he didn't think about that. He's not thinking about that. He's just <laughs> thinking about being a king. Right. No, dude, he's thinking about his opportunity, his right. chance, not TVD's chance, his chance. Come on. So Absolutely. It's a great job. You did your job, dude, like always. Oh, and yeah. But hey, listen, I didn't I didn't sweat it too much. I no, just I know kind you of. Know. I was kind of laughing at the whole thing because I, 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 it's like, I wonder, like, do the fans think that he's just oblivious to it? That I'm bringing up some subject that he's that he hasn't thought about. Obviously, I mean, um, but uh, but by the way, his parents and Jake, they want you to know that they want everybody to know that because they already had that conversation with the coach already. Because I'm sure the coach already had that conversation with him about where he stands and all of that. So it's good for you now because they actually brought you in to that conversation now. So you know where everybody stands. Right. It's really exactly. important, actually. And and again, this is where a guy like John Ruiz, Mr. NIL himself, helps out because he <laughs> actually signed uh, Jake to a $60,000 deal this year and 85000 next year. So there's re there's plenty of financial reasons for him to stick around. Uh, beyond uh, beyond the season, so but we'll see. I mean, listen, one hundred and fifty thousand reasons why to stick around. Okay. <laughs> hey, listen, I look, but in the end, oh, I mean, nil or not, these guys. The biggest the biggest issue, and I and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I told you tampering is going to become the biggest issue in college football. Oh, for that sure, is, that is going to be the, the the issue that everybody's talking about because that is the next story. It's how are these guys getting picked off of other schools to go to Alabama, Ohio State? And, and you know, how uh, why all of a sudden are they entering the transfer portal? Who's involved in that process? What money are they being promised? What are they being promised? So that'll be the next story that we're all sort of talking about in college football. But, um, you know, Jake genuinely, and we talked about this on the show last season, to me, he, he you see him on the sideline, he likes being around his teammates. Yeah, he likes to be. He likes being at Miami, and that's an important storyline because if Mar is going to keep this thing going beyond twenty twenty two, he needs Jake Garcia on this team. He needs him to be the quarterback in twenty three. By the way, that that's what you that that's what used to happen at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. Guys, guys stayed no matter what because they knew once they got an opportunity, they were going to get drafted anyway. And right. so, if if you show out, and even if you're as a second guy. That guy is going to get injured. That guy is going to move on the next year. You're going to get your opportunity. Even if it's only for a year, that window will be enough for you to display your skills to get you elevated into the draft and in, in a high position. That's how it was. That's how it used to be because what they were doing was fighting for that opportunity. And when they got it, they knew that it was the catapult. That was not the case here for the last 20 years, practically that nothing was guaranteed anymore. Now you've got an opportunity to kind of get that going again, that if Jake is really good, okay, when one TVD leaves and maybe it's after this season, Jake gets his opportunity the following year and he'll have two years, right? Of an opportunity, correct? Right. He'll have two years left. Yeah. So uh, more than enough time to establish himself as the man and move on. Right. And then you got Ja'Cory Brown, who, who arrived on campus. I've written a ton about him since he's been. And he'll uh, probably be redshirted this year anyway. Oh, and he looks good, man. Let me tell you, he's a big kid. He's got a good arm. I like this, the way his feet move. I'm like, you know what? They're set up, man. If this kid pans out and Ponce, you know, Frank Ponce gets to, to work with these guys, I think they're they're set up well at the quarterback position. And that's such a big part of this all.
uh, in terms of having success. So, um, yeah, they're set up well with the with what they got there. Um, anything? I know it's kind of the downtime right now, but because of the stupid transfer portal, wh- wh- anything on the on the player front? Yeah, I I mean, listen, I I think you know I wrote this yesterday. There were 15 kids out um, this spring because of uh, injury or surgery or or other reasons, and I think you know you're probably going to see a handful of those guys on that list that haven't played a ton. Those are guys that potentially could be on the transfer portal uh, by summer. So you know we talked about it. There's too many guys on this roster as there, as it is. Uh, you're over the scholarship limit um, once once the rest of the arrivals come this summer in the fall, and and so. Um, you know, I think people always ask me the question, Manny, who do you think is going to leave? Look at that injury list and see, look at the guys that didn't play a ton and do the math and you can figure it out. <laughs> OK, um, I, I think uh, so. There's that. And then, you know, what positions do they keep adding? Again, it comes down to um, best available and whether or not Mario thinks those guys can help him. He's just not going to take a guy to take a guy. Uh, I know that he's it's, he's really got to feel like uh, whatever they're bringing in here can contribute because he's got some good young players that he likes that he wants to develop and work with. So he and he can be in... a little bit more selective right now, right? At this point, he can absolutely, kind of... absolutely. I, I, he, I maybe mean... he could get to the point where Manny Diaz wanted to get to. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I looking at the roster yesterday um, and what they had out there, it sucks that you got two, two offensive linemen that are coming off surgery that still aren't ready to go in Jalen rivers and John Campbell, because those are two guys that are going to be competing for offensive line spots, but it allows you to get a guy like DJ Scaife back out at tackle to see if you want to put him there or move, keep him at guard where he was an all ACC second team guy last year. Um, you know, you get a look at an Usman Treyar, Cleveland Reed, all these guys that have kind of been, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth guy on the, in the rotation in the offensive line because of injuries and departures. Now those guys are going to get a ton of snaps this spring and you see whether or not it's worthwhile keeping them. You're going to see the Oregon kid that they got that squats over 700 pounds. Uh, the, uh, Samoan uh Logan Sapolu uh kid. He he's you know he's he's gonna play either center or guard most likely. Um so you're gonna get a chance to see these guys in the spring and and we'll see where they are in their development. Um linebacker, it's a shame Chase Smith is, isn't ready because he was a really talented uh freshman that I, I had big expectations and hopes for this year, but he's you know again dealing with that injury, that shoulder uh that he hurt late in the year. So he's not gonna be out there taking snaps at, at linebacker, but You'll get an opportunity to see Avery Huff, a kid who's been here for going on four years now. What is what has he got? The, the previous coaching staff couldn't do anything with him. Um, you know, can they get Avery Huff ready to play to be a contributor? He's super athletic. Um, so you know, you see a Corey Flag, his development from year two to year three. So you know, you'll you'll get to see something out of the spring. But I also think because of injuries, uh, it, there are some areas where you're going to be limited in being able to say, well, I think this of this position going into the fall. I think because of injuries, there's some there's going to be some unanswered questions following the spring. All right, good stuff. Is there? I doubt. I don't think I've seen anything you seen you write anything about this. Anything on the on the Ruiz and the stadium stuff and all that? We talked about it briefly. I went uh, to his uh, office building last Friday uh, in the middle of Coral Gables, where he's got sixty thousand square foot. <laughs> office over 100 people working there and they filmed the commercial with tyler van dyke and five offensive linemen i'll be writing about that soon but we talked a little bit about the stadium i mean look he's zeroed in on uh tropical park um that's where he feels that it's going to be built and and the way he looks at it it's beyond the stadium you know he thinks there's a lot of different things you can build there from in terms of a sports complex uh entertainment he wants to maximize the property there um and turn it into a, a world-class facility. So um, I'll have something on that uh, in the story once I finish writing it uh, today. I actually uh, was in St. Augustine over the weekend with my family, so I didn't I didn't work this weekend. I was with them, but uh, after covering practice yesterday, to, that's my assignment today. Get in, get in and finish that story. But I can tell you, as far as the stadium is concerned, you know he very much wants to be a part of that, and wants and that's his vision for that property. Whether or not he gets there, we'll see. But um, I think. Um, you know, if he can make it happen, he's going to he's going to try to make it happen. Would be cool, man. Would be cool if he can make it happen. All right. Follow him on Twitter. And you saw Jay talk about his article yesterday and all the other articles. Subscribe to The Athletic, folks. You can get a, a lot of great insight there locally and nationally from The Athletic and follow him on Twitter like I and many others do 
at many underscore Navarro. Manny, appreciate you, my brother. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Big O. Take care. You got it, baby. There you go. Manny Navarro and our Canes wear Miami Hurricanes report.